Hello! Welcome to the section More on Visual Design and User Experience. This section consists of two videos. The first focuses on some best practices for creating a consistent UI in ClickView. The second one looks at how we can add additional interactivity to our documents. Let's get started. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with creating a consistent ClickView UI. In this video, we will look at screen resolution, background image, and creating themes. We want to make sure that the user interface, which includes language, layout, and design, is as consistent as possible. A consistent user interface makes it predictable for the user. They will have a better understanding of how things work and will feel more in control. One straightforward example, which we've seen while developing our document, is to place objects in the same location if they're being used on multiple sheets. If, for example, the current selections box is always in the same place, then the user will immediately know where to look for it. The linked object feature is the best way to enforce this. One of the big no-nos in dashboard design is to create a dashboard that occupies more space than the user's screen size. This will require the user to scroll around to see the information. The easiest way to prevent this is to find out what default screen resolution is used by your users, or, if there is more than one, what the lowest common denominator is. When this resolution is known, you can design all of your sheets and documents to fit within it. One way to give your document a consistent look and feel on each sheet is to use a background image. Usually, a background image has a few predefined panels where objects can be placed. This image shows an example of a background image. When setting up a background image, either at the document properties or sheet properties level, it is important to configure the necessary settings. So, let's go to settings and click on document properties. Here, image formatting should be set to no stretch. Horizontal should be set to left and vertical should be set to top. Also assure that background colour should be set to a colour that matches the background colour of the image, so that the edges of the background image blend in with the rest of the background. Of course, you can use multiple background images to fit the different requirements of the sheets in your document. For example, you can use a background with two horizontal panels for your dashboard sheet, while using a background with three vertical panels for your analysis sheet. Let's save the settings before we exit. While using background images can go a long way in standardising the look and layout of your ClickView document, when you really want to standardise, for example, to enforce a corporate style, themes are what you need. A theme is stored in an external XML file with a .qvt extension. It contains separate sections for each type of object, document, sheet, and the various sheet objects. For each of these objects, the object-specific properties are stored, as well as caption and border properties, and print settings. You can even store only part of the settings, for example, adding the font type of a chart's axis to a theme while ignoring its font colour. The diagram on your screen shows the theme file structure. Notice that there is a separate section for each type of sheet object. A theme is created using the Theme Maker wizard and can contain settings for as many or few objects as you want, from a single setting for a single chart type to the entire look and feel of the document. Now let's step ahead and apply themes. As theme files store properties at various levels, like document, sheet and object, we can apply them at various levels too. Let's start with a practical example that shows how to apply a theme to a complete document. So. First open the notheme.qvw file that is located in the Examples folder. Let me zoom it a bit. Go to Settings and then Document Properties and navigate to the Layout tab. Click on the Apply Theme button and select the HighCloud Corporate Finished.qvt file from the Themes folder. The result now looks similar to the style we've been using in our own documents. Notice how, among other things, the background image, colours and caption settings have changed once we applied the theme. As was said before, themes do not always need to be applied to the entire document. We can apply a theme to a single sheet, 
by selecting Settings and then Sheet Properties and clicking on the Apply Theme button on the General tab. We can also apply a theme to a single object by opening the Object Properties window by right clicking on the object or group of objects and selecting Properties and clicking on the Apply Theme button on the Layout tab. Now that we've seen how to apply themes, let's see how we can create them. A theme is always created by copying the properties of documents, sheets and sheet objects which were already created. As we already spent quite some time styling our document, we can use it as a base for a high cloud corporate theme. We will start by adding the document settings. Let's follow a few simple steps to create the first iteration of our high cloud corporate theme based on the document properties. Select Tools and go to Theme Maker Wizard from the menu. Click on Next to go to Select Theme File dialog window. Ensure that the radio button is set to New Theme and that the template is set to None. Click on Next. This will open a dialog window to save our theme file. Browse to the folder Themes within the Includes folder and name the theme file High Cloud Corporate. Once done, click on Save. Now, in the Source Selection dialog window, select Document from the Source drop down list and click on Next. We have now reached the Object Type Specific Properties dialog window. Depending on which type of object we've chosen, this dialog will show all properties that we can export to the theme file. Note there are some omissions to what can be exported to a theme, and some of the legends in the list are not entirely helpful with defining what it is you are theming. Also, enable the checkboxes Color Map, Tab Row, Selection Style, Sheet Object Styles, Tab Row Style, and click on Next. Click on Finish to close the Theme Maker Wizard and save the theme. We have now reached the end of the Theme Maker Wizard dialog for the document properties. Now that we've added the document properties, we will now add the sheet properties. So, to add the sheet properties to our template, select Tools and go to Theme Maker Wizard from the menu and click on Next to open the Select Theme File dialog. Here, set the radio button to Modify Existing Theme and select Browse from the drop down list. Also, select the HighCloudCorporate.qvt file that we created earlier and click on Next to open the source selection. From the source drop down menu, select the Object Sheet Document SH01 dashboard. This may be different in your document. Now, click on Next to go to Object Type Specific Properties. As we can see here, the objects listed in the dialog window are different from those listed at the document level. Also note that, as we are modifying an existing theme, the options that are shown as selected are those that are currently already included in the theme. These were inherited from the document level properties, so you need to enable the checkboxes for color map and sheet zoom and click on next. Lastly, click on finish to close the wizard and add the sheet properties to the highcloudcorporate.qvt theme file. Now that we have added the sheet properties to our template, we will add the properties for two sheet objects, the list box and the pie chart. First, let's add the pie chart by following the next steps. Select Tools and then Theme Maker Wizard from the menu and click on Next to open the Select Theme File dialog. Set the radio button to modify existing theme and select Browse from the drop down list. Next, select the HighCloudCorporate.qvt file that we have been working on in the previous exercises and click on the Next to open source selection. From the source drop down menu, select the object Chart Document Values. The CH02 part may be different in your document. Enable all three checkboxes Object Type Specific, Caption Border, and Print Settings. Click on Next to go to Object Type Specific Properties. This dialog is the same as we saw when we were adding the document and sheet properties to the template. Leave all of the settings set to their default value and click on Next to go to Caption and Border Settings. As the name implies, in the Caption and Border Settings dialog window shown below, we can select which settings are related to borders and captions. As we will see later, we can apply these settings not only to the object we're adding to the template, but also for other objects. 
In practice, this means that when we create a complete document template, we will only need to add these properties twice, once for objects with a caption, such as list boxes, and once for objects without a caption, such as charts. Now, enable the Show Caption checkbox. This will ensure that our caption settings will be included in the template. Click on Next to go to Printer Settings. Leave all of the settings to their default value and click on Next to go to Insertion of Properties in Theme. In this dialog window, we can specify which objects we want to apply the caption and border and printing settings to. Let's add the caption and border and printing settings to every object that needs similar styling by following the next steps. In the Caption and Border Settings column, select the button Slider Calendar Object, Container, Chart and Search Object checkboxes. None of these objects by default need a caption, and in the Printing column, select every object to apply the same print settings to each object. Click on Next and then on Finish to save the theme. We have now added the properties for the pie chart to our template, which already contained the document and sheet properties. Cool! In this video, we have learnt how to create a consistent ClickView UI.